My Kona, I to way, I to way, I away. The way I think of it now is uh, it was the women that kept the culture. The men um, wasn't really that um, concerned with it as, as far as I know. Um, I remember um, uh, my great-grandfather, again, the same guy that, that got his food out of the corn crib, uh, he would go hunting down along the river uh, in, in a place called Doopy Hollow. And uh, he would put up a fall camp down there. And he always had a pot of ducks or squirrels or whatever uh, <clears throat> he could get during his hunt. A lot of ducks. And uh, so as far as I know, he pretty much cooked for himself at that time. And um, I remember my mother um, saying that she wouldn't ever eat there because he had feathers floating on top of the, the soup. Maybe it wasn't quite done to her, her standards, but um, um, it was pretty basic food. You know, we planted a garden and, and she prepared, my mother prepared all the, all the food and and my aunties too, when we got together, they would all get together and cook a lot of stews and soups, I think. And uh, of course, there was always the fry bread rival rivalry even back then, you know. And uh, I can't remember my dad or grandfather or any of those uh, being involved too much in uh, cooking. Although my dad would um, always fry brains and eggs, and that was something my mother wouldn't cook, you know, I don't know why, but she just wouldn't do that. Uh, but it was good food and we liked it, and, but he always the one that prepared that. Um, otherwise, um, as far as men being involved in the food process, um, of course, they'd be out gathering the corn up if we was to dry it, you know. Um, and they would milk, milk and the cows, and and my mother had chickens, so we always had our own chickens and eggs. Um, pretty much separated along those lines, I think.